time again. Thirty seconds. One minute. One thirty. Sherman Alexi is a Native American author and poet. Now his writings are very influential within the Native American community, but also outside. He takes an unorthodox approach into getting his message out about poverty, alcoholism, and general problems within the Native American reservations. He makes his writings humorous essentially making fun of the Native American lifestyle. Now, while his readings can be a little uncomfortable to read at times, this unorthodox approach attracts a larger audience because Sherman Alexi is looking at what he can do to help his community and not at how he may per be perceived for doing so. He ultimately reaches a larger audience and spreads awareness about a very, very tough problem. And it's this idea that is echoed in today's quotation by Beth Rigotuso, a Nebraska LGBT activist. I've always said that Nebraska would be the last one to turn rainbow. Now, Rigotuso highlights the notion that sometimes we have to wait to get what is right or what we deserve, but it's worth waiting for. And what we can take from this is that we must focus on the end goal. And we can see this through two ways. First, because we can remove distractions. And second, we can become more productive. But first, when we focus on the end goal, we can remove distractions. And we can see this through two ways. First, through the novel The Zero, and second, through the Golden Fleece Award. But first, in the novel The Zero, Officer Brian Remy, it was a first responder to 9-11. Now, he is torn between his two identities of becoming a celebrity after becoming a first responder to the 9-11 attacks and the post-traumatic stress disorder that he experiences on a daily basis. This torn identity causes him to have blank outs throughout his entire days. He can't remember what is happening from moment to moment. But he decides to keep a journal where he can log all of his memories and conversations that he has had with other people throughout the day. Effectively, Brian Remy is focusing on the end goal and he is piecing together his life bit by bit. So because Brian Remy was able to focus on the end goal and work on that journal, he removed all distractions from his daily life. But second, the Golden Fleece Award was enacted in 1975 through 1988, and it was done by a congressman named Wilman Proxmi William Proxmire. Essentially, every month, he awarded a, the Golden Fleece Award to a congressman who wasted the most money. <laughs> now, the Washington Post heralded this as one of the most successful public relations devices in politics at that time. William Proxmire's award helped to create accountability within Congress at that time. <coughs> Nobody wanted to get that award. So because William Proxmire focused on the end goal of creating better relations and removing corruption from government, he was able to remove the, direction, the distraction of wasteful spending. So through the examples of the Zero and the Golden Fleece Award, when we focus on the end goal, we can remove distractions. But second, we can become more productive. And we can see this through two ways. First, through the Big Donor Show, 
and second, through the Sokol hoax. But first, in 2007, a producer in Netherlands created a reality TV show where 25 people who were in need of a kidney or facing death were essentially vying for votes from the population of the Netherlands. There was one kidney available. Now this caused international outrage on a massive scale. But by the end of the reality show, it was revealed that they were all actors. And as a result, over 7,000 new organ donors had registered within the Netherlands. So because the producer focused on the end goal, he became more productive despite his unorthodox measures. But second, the Sokol hoax. In the 1990s, most academic journals did not have a high standard. They were not peer reviewed. So Alan Sokol, a physics professor at NYU, decided something needed to be changed. So he sent an article to the social text, an esteemed academic journal at the time, in which he explained that quantum physics was actually a social construct. And upon, upon when this article was published in the social text, he did an interview explaining that all of his claims were false, that he had just made up gibberish the entire time, effectively really embarrassing the social text, but he drew attention to an issue that needed to be fixed. So because Alan Sokol was able to focus on the end goal of getting a better standard for academic journals, he became more productive in the academia field. So in returning back to today's quotation by Beth Rigatuso, I've always said that Nebraska would be the last one to turn Ravo. What we took from this is that we must focus on the end goal. And we agree with this because we can remove distractions and become more productive. So Sherman Alexie's writings may be a little unorthodox, but because he focuses on the end goal, he removes distractions and is productive.